Welcome to You and Your Health. I'm your host, Dr. David Bertone. Today, we're going to talk about um, an interesting concept in the world of fitness and um, muscle training. And some of you may have heard of it. It's called Pilates. And it's a really cool concept of strengthening the whole body and stabilizing the muscles in your body and your spine. And it's a wonderful fitness workout. And you're going to learn all about uh, what Pilates is and see some demonstrations today. Our guest is Danielle Bucciolato. Danielle is the owner of Renaissance Pilates with locations in Red Bank and in the Bell Works facility in Homedale. Danielle, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. All right, we appreciate you coming by. So uh, give us a little background about when you got started with Pilates training and how you got certified. Sure. Well, I opened up the first Pilates studio in Hoboken, New Jersey in 2004, went through an extensive training uh, for a certification um, with anatomy, as well as how to utilize the apparatus and, and equipment, which you will also uh, see for yourself yep. uh, in the demo. Um, and that took me a good year to go through. And um, I, I really was drawn to Pilates because I had, um, a, in my teenage years, had gone through a car accident and was broken a little bit in the body. Okay. So rehabilitation uh, was introduced to me at a, at a young age, um, unfortunately, but fortunately, because it, it really drew me to um, appreciating the mechanics of the body and how to improve the range of motion and how to, to live uh, without so much pain. Right. right. So I found Pilates really several years after that. Um, and I decided that uh, I was going to heal myself and then I wanted to heal others. So awesome. I opened it in 2004 and, and then grew the, the establishment and the brand uh, ever since. Great. Now tell us, you know, um, a little bit about what Pilates is from a uh, from an overall standpoint. So somebody that doesn't understand it at all, what what it, where did the term come from? How did it start? Sure. Well, Joseph Pilates is the inventor, and uh, he started and designed this series of, of exercises in the early, in, in really the early 1900s. Um, and he was a nurse in the war, and he rehabbed patients in the war on their hospital beds through these uh, springs that he would attach to the bed to help strengthen the, the patients um, and also help them uh, strengthen their core so that they can move about and improve their range of motion. He then brought it into New York City in the 30s and 40s, it became more popular in the dance world, but then became much more mainstream decades later uh, in the 80s and 90s. Um, at, when I last checked, uh, as of about a year ago, over 15 million people practice Pilates every single day today. Wow. So, um, it's really becoming a mainstream mainstream practice for most, um, and uh, you know awareness just like this program just really does help us to educate the community about how beneficial it could really be in so so many ways because it's, it's a practice, it's a movement. Yeah, so it's really movement based, and I know that some people do it without the machine, correct? But the the primary. Right. The primary, uh, when people think about Pilates, they think about the machine, which is called the reformer, correct? That is correct. So Pilates is a series of exercises that can be performed on an apparatus known as the reformer or the Cadillac or the Pilates chair. There's also a device called the barrel, but it can also be um, practiced on a mat without any equipment at all. So you're using your own body weight, really, uh, with no assistance. Okay. And so somebody can't, they can do that at home, I guess, with some instruction, but to do true Pilates, you, you need the apparatus. That is correct. And you, okay. you do be assisted with a certified instructor. Yeah. As well. Because, right, yeah, it can be, I would assume it can be kind of, it can be kind of dangerous, right? If you don't know what you're doing on this apparatus. That's correct. So the instructor leads the client through the entire hour for the most part um, of all of the series of exercises. 
Um, and there's, it's technical as well. So there's a lot of hands-on correction, although these days we're, we're articulating a little bit less hands-on, but just a, as effective. Um, and um, yes, but the, the math work can easily be followed uh, virtually at home or through specific apps that do offer, offer that as well for, for someone who just chooses to be in their home for the work lots. So, so then if they do it in their home, it's kind of movement therapy. When they do it on the machine, there might be more resistance, I would assume, right? In the That's so the apparatus um, is a little easier, so to okay. speak. You are being supported on an, a piece of equipment. And, okay. and although you're using springs and a pulley rope system, you have a bit more support, whereas the mat work could be more challenging, more advanced, because you are, are, are not being supported by anything at all and, and relying solely on your own body weights to get you into and flow from exercise to exercise. Okay. Um, now, in terms of when you get somebody for the first time, somebody comes in for the first time and they want to take a class or do an individual, is there some kind of assessment you typically do with these people or you're right yes. away put them through a program? How does that work? You generally give the client a postural analysis so that they're understanding uh, where they need to improve within their, their posture. Um, and then we will cater that session specifically to their needs. So whether it is a private session or a small group session, we can, as the instructor, we can still cater each individual accordingly and give them modifications specifically in one class. Oh, okay. And what should somebody expect? So they, they take their first class or their first session, I'm assuming there's gonna be some soreness or muscles feel stretched or what's the typical response for people? Well, good listeners are always great candidates because there is a lot of cueing that goes on and there is a little bit of anatomy that we do teach and educate the client, mm -hmm. which they generally will begin to appreciate. Um, but uh, in terms of the, the physical aspect, yes, they, they will be a little sore in the abdominals, perhaps the back, because we're our goal is to strengthen the core abdominals. Um, and all, all the layers of the abdominal wall, which also then support the back muscles. So um, the, the core is where you know, we're aiming um, to get into, but we also hit the backside. So you may feel a little soreness in the front, a little bit in the back. If we're working on the apparatus, we are working all the major muscle groups of the body. So we do work a lot of the arms and the legs in flexion and extension, mm -hmm. um, as well as spinal rotation, lateral flexion, a lot of forward flexion, and then, um, yeah, pretty much all ranges of motion. So they're, they're gonna feel good. They're also going to feel like they got a great stretch because Pilates is not just about strength. It is also about the flexibility. So we yeah. can try to balance out um, the movements by bringing both the flexibility component component into it as well as the strength component into it. They're just they're going to feel great to answer Good. your question. <laughs> now, now, would you say that Pilates is somewhat similar uh, to yoga, except there is resistance involved? Would you say there is movements like yoga, or is that is that a little bit of a stretch? Pilates is done by performing repetitions of each exercise. So we'll okay. do five to 10 repetitions of one exercise, and then we will flow from that exercise into the next, into the next, into the next, without ever repeating the same exercise. Oh, okay. It feels like a dance. It's, it's certainly cohesive in that aspect. Um, and we, we really focus more on the abdominals. Okay. So oh, yoga is wonderful. And we, we love when our clients um, have a yoga background. Mm -hmm. When we teach them how to use their abdominals properly, they generally will bring the abdominal connection in a safe mm -hmm. way for all of their other practices, which then enhance those other practices. Yeah. So okay. uh, they're certainly yoga and Pilates are certainly complements to one another, although quite different. It seems to be that people that participate in Pilates are really devoted to that and they do that's part that's the main part of the workout is that is that pretty common yeah it's it's a mind-body connection yep. that 
truly like medicine. I mean, I've been working with clients for years and if they fall off the boat, which we all do every now and then, and then get back on, they really acknowledge how much they missed it because they don't feel as well. They don't, they don't feel as flexible. They're, so um, I always like to say Pilates is like medicine. It's, it's an intellectual exercise, intelligent exercise, because there's so much mind-body connection okay. to it. So it's not as spiritual yet. Yep. It, it's, you know, we're, we're teaching the, the clients why they're moving and what muscles they're using and the action so that they can really implement that into, you know, their everyday lives, their posture, how they carry themselves and uh, so forth. It changes That's habits. Yeah, that's that's really awesome. I think before we take a break, we're going to introduce we're going to introduce your sister and business partner, Joelle, and uh, she's going to act as the model and you can explain a little bit about the reformer. So before we take a break, why don't we bring Joelle in sure. set her up on the reformer and uh, let's do a quick little intro. Hi, Joelle. Hi. How are you? Thanks for joining us on you and your health. So I understand you're Danielle's business partner and in the in the facility, and you're going to act as our um, patient or client during the session. So Danielle, if you can set up Joelle and uh, you know on the reformer. So this is the reformer. It's one of the pieces of apparatus that we do use. It is a spring resistance uh, piece of apparatus that has springs attached to the um, the bottom of the carriage, which slides up and down. And then we also have a pulley system that we either place our hands or our feet in, okay? So today we're just gonna do a little, uh, a, a mini workout, so to speak. We'll get Joelle moving and warmed up. Um, and I'll try to explain to you all of the ranges of motion that we can hit um, and how the abdominals and the breath in Pilates are truly related and very specific. Great. Okay, so to start, we're gonna start with, a series called footwork, okay? And this is great because it rehabilitates um, the, the quadricep muscles and helps to strengthen the muscles around the knee. And we get a lot of clients in Pilates that um, have problems obviously with these joints here. So we start with the footwork so that, that we can bring awareness to the clients um, to mind in terms of how they really should be connecting the mind-body process through the muscle and the mind together. So all we're gonna do here just for a few repetitions is press the carriage all the way out. It's gonna be a full extension. At the extension here, Joelle is contracting the quadricep without locking out of the joint. And then she's gonna come right back home. It's like a squat lying down. And we'll do just a few here. Joelle is also working in a neutral spine. So Pilates is really important in terms of alignment. When we're working in a neutral spine, the pelvis remains in a parallel position to the mat. So the pubic bone and the hip bones lie in the same plane without creating stress underneath the back because the natural curvature of the, lum the lumbar spine, the lower part of the spine is always present. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're just going to here. The breath is specific because as she presses out, it's an inhale through the nose. As she comes home, it's an exhale out through the mouth. And we want to make sure that the client understand that every exhale helps to stabilize the center of the body. It helps to engage the abdominal muscles that keep the pelvis in a very shock absorbing position that, um, that it should be in so that there's no rotation, there's no tucking and under stress in the back and so forth. So Great. let's just do a few, several different um, variations of the footwork that we can do. And then we're going to come all the way in. Danielle, Danielle, yeah. we're going to we're going to take a break here, and as soon as we come back, we're going to go through the rest of the workout. And I guess we got Joel nice and warmed up, so yeah. we'll be we'll be right back to finish the uh, segment. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Welcome back to You and Your Health. I'm your host, Dr. David Bertone. Today, we have a, a Zoom show with our guest, Danielle Bucciolato, and her sister, Joelle, who are owners of the Renaissance Pilates facilities in Red Bank and Homedale. And they're talking about Pilates, some introductory moves, and how this is so important for people to understand that movement 
and core stability can really help their overall health. So Danielle, continue with the training of Joelle. Wonderful. So now we're working through a neutral spine while lying um, supine on the reformer. And we're going to roll the hips all the way up to what we call a shoulder bridge without moving the carriage. Because the carriage has some springs underneath, the client is working hard to keep the stability and from the carriage moving out. So the hamstrings are working. As the hips are lifted, the abdominals are engaging. We want to make sure we're neutral in the back. So basically, um, we will generally cue to keep that area between the hip bone and the bottom rib really tight. That's part of your oblique fiber muscle, which the client gets to understand, um, so, so that the spine stays in a really strong position. Joelle is going to press the carriage all the way out to a full extension in the knee, drop the hips just a bit, and then lift the hips. Use the back of her muscles to rise up, and then she's going to do that just a few times. And she's using a little bit of her arms, a little bit of her tricep muscle to keep the collarbones open. Pilates is often about posture as well as breath. So we'll do that one more time. We'll press all the way out. We'll come all the way in. We'll hold it there. And something fun we can always add to test the alignment um, and the abdominal connection is to lift the right leg. We call this tabletop position. Often the right hip will lower. So we wanna make sure that the hips are exactly level as they should be. Then we'll lower down. We'll do this quite a few times. We'll be really focusing on the abdominals here. Then we're gonna drop the hip and we're gonna roll all the way down through the spine. Beautiful. And Pilates has a lot to do with articulation, rolling through the spine one bone at a time. Okay, Joel, we'll just hug her knees into her chest. We'll just kind of get that lower back nice and warm and stretched. And then from there, we're gonna stay on the back for just a moment. We're gonna go into a series called feet and straps. This is where the rope and system and pulley comes into play. It's wonderful for flexibility. Keep in mind that because we're working on the reformer, everything can be modified for the client. So if the client is not yet at this ideal, not ideal position, which is 90 degrees at the hip, we would lessen the spring load. Okay, Joelle's been doing Pilates for quite some time, so she's worked her way up to this point, which is really uh, wonderful for her. So we're gonna inhale to hold the position. Joelle's going to exhale to press into the straps to lower the legs. She's going to uh, engage the abdominals as well, so the lower back does not arch off of the, the mat, and then she's going to hinge. This is where the flexibility comes into play. We're elongating the back of the muscle, then when she presses into the straps, she's contracting. So we get to work both ends. Okay, so this is where the strength meets the flexibility. We do several different variations of this as well. We're going to press down. At this point, we're going to add articulation of the spine, which is really great to really open up the back. So draw a pinch at the hip and start to peel the lower and the middle back up, adding a little bit of flexion here. Okay, if someone has a little bit of a tight hamstring, we will then bend the knees. And that will alleviate any of the pull that they feel. Keeping the knees bent, she'll roll down through the spine, which is bone to bone. We always want to make sure that it is sequential and then press pulling the abdominals in to support the lower back. We'll do that just one more time for visual. We're going to exhale, lift up. The abdominals are always pulling in. There's going to be a roll through the spine and an exhale to press out. And then we can just bend the knees in. This is your tabletop. We can exhale to press into the straps here. We're using the abdominals to stabilize the core. At the same time, she's strengthening the front of her thighs. So we get to really work several different muscle groups at one time, which is not only fun, but beneficial as we know. We'll just do one more and then we'll release the feet from the straps. We'll come in, good, one foot at a time, we'll release. Okay, so at this point we're lying on the back, but now we're going to roll off to the side and we're going to come into a kneeling position. Okay, in a neutral alignment, so shift forward just a little bit. We're going to make sure the shoulders have a good distance away from the ears. The neck is part of the spine, so we will always ensure wherever we are in an exercise that that alignment always follows through. When we strengthen the muscles in the neutral alignment, they, they eventually will remember and, of course, um, help to support the entire body, right? So this is the reasoning behind why we want all the lines to always be really nice here. So we're gonna press the carriage back just a little bit from the hip, and then we're gonna fold the hip and we're gonna pull the carriage right back in while maintaining the neutral spine. Okay, so 
We're getting a little bit of thigh work in here. You're gonna exhale to pull in. The abdominals are pulling in just to stabilize. Press on, and then we're gonna come right back in again. We can do this in a neutral spine. We can also do this in a round back, okay? So we do play with the, the, the planes um, and ranges of the spine as well. Okay, so Joel is gonna go into a round back. Pull right back in. She's going to scoop the belly all the way in, create a round back and drop the shoulders. So now it's going to act a little bit more like an abdominal crunch. So when you press out, she's going to exhale, pull in and scoop the belly in to increase the curve of the spine. And we can pick up the pace and have fun with this. Now, Danielle, is there resistance there or is it just the body weight resistance? Spring resistance under the carriage. Oh. So Presses the carriage out. She's extending the springs, and then the springs come back home. And you can adjust. You can adjust that. You can adjust that. Yes, we can adjust that for a more intro client for sure. If you wanted to perhaps challenge the exercise for one client, um, this more intro client can stay here. And then, if you wanted to challenge and make it a little bit more of an athletic conditioning exercise. We're going to go back into the neutral spine. She would actually lift her knees to a hover. This is more of an advanced exercise and press the carriage back to find a plank and then pull and pull right back in. So she's using lots of core abdominal muscles here just to stabilize as she presses back and then comes right back in. Okay, we'll just do that one more time because that's not an easy exercise. <laughs> We'll hold it there and she'll mindfully slowly drop her knees down because the kneecap is fragile using the abdominals to assist. From here, you can go into an arms pulling strap exercise where you can kneel upright, take all the way up, good. So now we have the straps that she had her feet in and will now act as arm straps. So you're going to slowly, because it's a very light in the carriage bed, don't pull, don't pull. Good. Okay, we're going to pull the pelvis slightly under only because Joelle has a small tendency to arch her back, anteriorly tip her pelvis forward. So I see that as an instructor. So what I ask her to do is pull these muscles tighter so the pelvis aligns more usually as it should. And there's no strength to the lower back. This exercise can be done seated on a box or down. She's going to exhale, press her arms slightly forward. Good. And then she's going to inhale to slowly lower her arms back down. So now we're using the arms and the shoulders. Beautiful. Yeah, so what I can see. What I can, if, if I can just add that, you know, as a physical therapist, the beauty is that it's really working the postural control, elongating the spine, and people don't realize you need a lot of stability in your trunk to be able to have strength and mobility of your arms and legs. And that's, that's what's right. so beautiful about this. That's right. And we, we really will make our way up to this level of training. You know, the beautiful thing about Pilates is that anyone can start the program at any age. Mm -hmm. And we, we really do work with all walks of life in terms of pre and post natal, um, as well as professional athletes and geriatric community. So it's, it's a really, really beautiful thing. Great. So keep arms pulling forward. And then what we can also do is work the back side. So I'm going to take the straps from Joelle. She will flip around to face the other direction. So also in a kneeling position with the knees up, we can also do this seated, placing your hands on the inside the loops. You're gonna come up, right? Good. So now we're really gonna focus on the posture muscles, okay? Often you'll we'll see clients with um, overstretched muscles to the back, right? With just our tendency with bad posture and, and, and what we do every day in life, as you know. So our, our goal is to shorten the muscle to pull the shoulder blades back to where they should be, which is a neutral alignment, okay? So what we do here is slowly press the arms past the hips, engage the tricep, make sure all the back muscles are working properly. And we always do this with an exhale. Okay, it's important because as soon as the exhale occurs, the abdominals will compress to help stabilize and then to expel the air out of the lower lobe of the lung. Okay, so this is just a little series of triceps. We can add some fun things as well here. We'll just do two more. Exhale, she's using a little bit of her glutes to help stabilize everything on top of the legs. 
and release on one. Beautiful. So we'll place those down as well. Danielle, can we show can we show a few um, advanced movements in our in our last few minutes? Maybe some really complex or complicated movements. That would be pretty cool to see. Yes. Yeah. Something a little more challenging. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> why not? Okay. So from here, you're going to go into an elephant position. So I want you to stand on the reformer with your feet flat up against the headrests. And then, so walk your heels all the way up. Toes down, good, hands are gonna be here. This is called the elephant. She's also gonna be in a nice neutral position, stabilizing the shoulder, shift back away from the knees. This is where you're gonna start. You're gonna press the carriage out. She's gonna drop her hips a little bit and then pipe the pelvis up with an exhale. Okay. Wow. Press the carriage out. There's your plank, neutral spine, and then everything lifts up. So basically she is pulling the carriage head with the springs all the way up. Inhale, don't press back. There you go. Exhale, all the way up. So in order to get that carriage bed back there, it's quite challenging. And then up. Good. And then she, we can also add a little bit of a, a component of flexibility where she would extend one leg up all the way to the sky. Good. And then press the carriage back with the one leg a little bit, a little bit, and then pull right back in. Good. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty that's pretty advanced, I would assume. <laughs> and then drop your foot right back down. Good. And then you can come into a kneeling position. And then what we can do in a rehabilitative um, aspect is come into a kneeling position facing Dr. Bertone. Kneeling. Yes. And then we can we see a lot of rotator cuff injury, you know, post um, rehab where you can kneel up. Place your hand right inside. Okay, so for here, you're going to draw your elbow right by your sides. And so fling the pelvis slightly under to achieve nice and neutral. So we do a lot of internal and external rotation of the arm to really help kind of re rehabilitate this muscle here, the deltoid muscle as well. So we'll do a few of those. And then we can also do adduction, abduction, which basically is to keep the form as it is, send the arm out. Use a little bit of the chest wall. Every time the arm pulls past the, the belly button, the abdominals are zipping, right? She's always using her abdominals to initiate the movement. Okay, so we can do quite a few just like that. And then of course we would do the other side. So there's, there's it's certainly a lot of different exercises that we can do there. That's amazing. That's really good stuff. That's, um, I'm definitely gonna make some referrals to your, to your facility. Can you just in the last minute, um, tell us about some of the other cool things that you offer at Renaissance. Sure. Well, our Red Bank location solely um, really focuses on group fitness as well as Pilates Map, a wonderful Pilates Map program and apparatus, as you see here. And then we also have our facility in Bellworks, which you mentioned earlier, which is more wellness related. Joelle's the wellness director there. So we combine the, the Pilates program programming with more of a rehabilitative um, touch to it so that we can just help the, the clients continue their, their path and their journey to wellness to become uh, just greater beings. Joel, I'm sure, could just touch a little bit on the extra services that we have. That would be yeah. great. Yeah. Well, driven. It's all about results. So we want to attain them. We want to attain them efficiently and as quickly as possible, safely as possible as well. So it's all about how, how are you going to uh, attain it? Gonna, is it about performance? Is it about recovery? It's all about longevity as well. So we have cryotherapy, the whole body cryotherapy, three minute chamber, uh, which reaches minus 230 degrees. And that's great for reducing inflammation, pain, aches and pains, um, really great for uh, performance as well. So not only great for the body, but it's great for the mind too. So you create new synapses in the brain, helps you sleep deeper, overall just perform better, both mentally, physically, and emotionally. And we also have the infrared sauna, which is also great for rejuvenation, um, immunity, for recovery, and oxygen therapy too, great for rejuvenating the cells. We're all mitochondria related, so really just um, giving as much good energy to our, our inner selves, not just the muscles or what we look like, but how we feel. That's you know? awesome. Yeah, so a lot of fun. 
We have a lot of other things too, um, but that just touches on it. Great. So it's all in common. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Well, I really want to thank you guys for introducing us to Pilates and your facility. You have a beautiful facility. And thanks for everybody for joining us on You and Your Health. Until next time, I'm your host, Dr. David Bertone.